it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Slaves. To learn more about some of the local struggles against white supremacy here in Canada and how they're connected to the bigger picture, I recently caught up with Ajamu Nanguaya, an anarchist educator and writer from Toronto and an organizer with the Network for the Elimination of Police Violence. Hey Ajamu, how the fuck are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good, just battling a cold, but I'm getting better. So, it's February, which means it's Black History Month. In the past, you've been critical of this term and the way it's framed by the media, government officials, and social justice advocates alike. Why is that? It's a, a cultural celebration, and it is not focused on the need for social emancipation. Therefore, it is a time for us to engage in a name change, but beyond the name change is the need to focus on political ideology, political organizing, for us to expose the fact that there's still a need for us to fight against capitalism, racism, homophobia in the present time, and that we, we haven't achieved emancipation, which history kind of focus on the past and not the present and the future. Up here in Canada, most of the news and analysis that we hear about police brutality comes from the U.S. How is the operation of white supremacy, as it relates to state violence, different in both countries, and in what ways is it the same? I would say, fundamentally, there's no real difference between police violence in the United States and Canada, because we experience slavery in Canada, and the police, as always, are the coercive element in society, whether it's the police, the military has always worked against African people in the U.S. and also in Canada. On a similar note, many peace in this country are generally familiar with the history of the civil rights and black liberation movements in the U.S. and more recent historical examples such as the L.A. riots of 1992, but are often less familiar with the history of struggles against anti-black racism here at home. How do you think this affects the perspective of revolutionaries here in Canada? And are there specific movements and events that you think peeps here would benefit from learning more about? The media dominates um, our perception of reality. And African Americans are living in the center of world imperials in the United States. So whatever they do gets projected across the world, in Africa, in Latin America, a lot of us end up using African Americans as our reference point. So whatever African Americans do, we tend to pick it up in our own spaces. But we also here in Canada, you know, have a history of struggle and resistance. For example, we know about the LA Rebellion or the Rodney King Rebellion in April, May 1992. But we're not aware of the Young Street Rebellion that took place around the same time. A march took place and it was a solidarity march with what's going on in LA at the time. But it was also a march to protest a police killing of a young African man, you know, during the same time. But we had a rebellion here. Over the past couple of years, Black Lives Matter has burst onto the political scene and as a popular rallying cry for racial equality in the United Snakes. There's also an active chapter in Toronto, which has employed tactics similar to their U.S. counterparts, such as highway blockades, to protest police killings. What is your take on Black Lives Matter and what role do you see them playing as struggles against white supremacy intensify? Initially, when the movement came out on the scene, I was more, more openly critical of it. But at the same time, in terms of its ideological direction, its emphasis on more mobilizing people in the street and not necessarily organizing people who live in communities, whether it's working class, um, highly segregated communities in the U.S., where we, we work with people to build their independent organization to struggle. But I'm, I've kind of tempered my <laughs> critique of the group because a lot of folks who are drawn into it are young people. They're becoming involved in an organized context for the first time. And we have to remember that young people are going to make mistakes. Anything else you want to add? As anarchists, we need to organize with and among the people. Anarchism is the solution to oppression in society, but we have to be among the people. It, you know, we may even have to approach him in a pragmatic way that we may not even tell him that anarchism is a solution. But if we're working with the people and we're looking at how do we organize, 
and you start to propose a program of broad participation so we can introduce anarchist principles to the people and then later on as they become more politically developed they are they come to our meeting they'll realize that my god we were practicing we've been practicing anarchism for so long we didn't know that's what we were doing something i mean, it's really not we have to be strategic tactical in introducing anarchism to the people thanks ajamu and that about that's it for this edition of it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel fine as it happens with most guests it breaks my fucking heart to edit the interview down to fit the format i really recommend that y'all listen to my entire conversation with ajamu his insight into movement and power building are super solid to do so just visit my fucking website stimulator.tv Niggas wish be acting fruity you'll be cracking like they pookie rather smoke a doobie than be burning and the looting bang bang pig shooting we should blame rudy julie